the game is fixed. Cyberpunk has been through a tough time, a rocky ride if you will, but things are changing. Cyberpunk was created as a tabletop game by writer and game designer Mike Pondsmith, with the first edition releasing back in 1988. Then in 2012, Mike was contacted by CD Projekt Red where they said, Hello there, we're a bunch of guys from Poland and we want to do Cyberpunk. That was my Polish accent, I've never actually heard a Polish person speak. Fast forward to 2013, the first trailer for Cyberpunk drops and people went insane making it seem like we could play as max tech for some reason, and also ending with the great tagline of coming when it's ready. I sure hope so. <sighs> it did not come out when it was ready. But we're almost there, you must wait. Because development didn't actually start until three years later in 2016, because the insane amount of world building and work required. Nearing the time of release, we'd get insanely cool cinematics and gameplay clips. Keanu Reeves went on stage talking about it because he was in the game. And after an intense four years of work, Cyberpunk finally really, 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 really. And that shit was in horrible shape. Like me, after the final battle of Azeroth. NPCs and vehicles were teleporting around and T-posing. Not the vehicles, but the people were T-posing. And also disappearing. The game would find new and interesting ways to fuck your playthrough up. And if you played on Xbox One or PS4, I am sorry about the explosion that occurred in your home. It was your fault. CD Projekt Red had knowingly dropped an entirely incomplete game and not mentioned anything until people called them out on it. The amount of issues you'd run into just trying to do simple things was insane. But for a good amount of people, these issues were not game breaking. You could still commit every war crime in the book in one of the most beautiful open worlds in gaming, which I think was the main thing keeping people playing. The story and the world tied to it. I would find myself just driving around the city looking up at buildings like a kid his first time in Ikea. And when the NPCs aren't fighting the source code on the streets, it also feels alive and real. Don't even get me started on the music, man. It's one of the best game soundtracks I've heard in my 84,000 years of living. But unfortunately, these things didn't keep people's attention and most importantly, mine for long enough. People wanted the gameplay they were promised at launch and at the time, it just wasn't that. This went on for a while. Patches came out, issues remained. Me personally, I'd still get back on and relive my glory days, but something was still missing. So I'd get back to the coal mines of Destiny 2 until I could feel again. Then in the year of our Lord, 2022, September 13th, Cyberpunk Edge Runners released on Netflix. Cyberpunk was back on the menu and that shit was good. They had a tie-in update with cool little references to the show, apartments were added, and the show was a 10 out of fucking 10. Everybody loved it. Thankfully, the Twitter revisionists haven't gotten to it yet. They're on Doom Eternal right now. Um, guys, I think it's time we talked about how corny this game was. Shut up. Okay, go home with a stranger. Knock exclusively on the door of the known neighborhood crackhead during Halloween and do not safety check the candy, you fucking buffoon. Edge Runners was so good that it got a bunch of new people to get the game and also a bunch of old fans to reinstall as well. The game hadn't reached its full potential yet, but Edge Runners managed to show people how beautiful, unique, and complex this world that Mike Pondsmith had created was. So much so that people just had to go experience it for themselves. But while that traction was good, it didn't last, because that feeling of incompleteness still remained. Until June 11th, 2023. I still remember where I was. I had just left the doctor's office after they found another alien parasite growing in my neck, when suddenly a meteor crashed in front of me. And on that meteor, it said, Phantom Liberty has been announced. What the fuck is Phantom Liberty, I asked. I turned the paper over. New cyberpunk DLC. Okay, I'm ready. Get this show on the road. People were skeptical, as they should have been, uh, because the last time Cyberpunk released, it did not go well. The game just felt so incomplete in its core systems. The biggest thing to me at least being that the cops just kind of teleported to your location after you did a crime. You piece of shit! And didn't chase you if you tried to leave. And MaxTac, the big terrifying SWAT team that's shown in the story and all the trailers, uh, doesn't show up in the open world even if you hit the max wanted level. The Phantom Liberty trailer looked really cool though, showing Idris Elba as a new character, and the story having something to do with spies and the president. Then, silence. Until the dawn. August 22nd, they announced alongside Phantom Liberty would release Cyberpunk 2.0, a massive update to the game. Now this list of additions and fixes is as long as my GPA is low. But holy shit, Peter, they cooked! 
Weapons on cars, revamped police systems, AI enhancements, perks and skills overhaul. NPCs are smarter, damn it. Now, this is when I started looking back into it because this is all anyone had been asking for and more. So I buckled the fuck up and I waited. I sat in a nuclear war bunker from August 22nd until September 21st, getting out only once to post my last video on horror games. The clock struck September 21st and I left my bunker a new man ready to enter Night City. And then I had to wait till 5 p.m. The clock struck 5 p.m. and I could finally play Cyberpunk. So I clicked in and oh, I need to reinstall because the file corrupted. 238 hours had passed and Cyberpunk was finally ready to play. So I clicked in and holy shit. The music is peak. The DLC story is immaculate. The cyberware upgrades are so sick, allowing for even more unique builds that can also come at a price if you put on too many. The new open world area is as detailed and as cool as the rest of the city and fits in perfectly. The cops are an actual threat now and will hunt you until you're shitting bricks. And then Max Tech pulls up ready to melt your ass the moment you so much as graze a pixel on that fourth star. Despite its past struggles and difficulties, Cyberpunk was able to redeem itself. You can now fully immerse yourself in this crime-ridden, corrupt city of the future. The way it was originally intended to be experienced and more. Cyberpunk is fucking back and you should play it. This isn't sponsored either. I just really love Cyberpunk. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and join the Discord if you want to see me fight a bear and I will see you next time. Peace. Peace.